In 1988, a fellow classmate, Mr. Shursad Bosrak Chami, wrote a letter to the Stanford GSV community saying, I'm seeing a lot of tears being shed at the end of her MBA career. My classmates are saying, I wish I had spent more time with my friends and less time getting higher and higher grades. After a few years, Mr. Shursad wrote back and he said, in the real world, no one has ever asked me about my grades at all. Instead, I have constantly leveraged the intra and interpersonal learnings that I have gotten interacting with my classmates. How are we spending our time here at the GSV? My name is Raul, and today I want to talk to you about how I found out that relationships are the most important part of my life, even more important than external measures of success, such as money or even my career. I will share with you a study from a group of Princeton University professors where they found that levels of self-reported happiness actually increased with income and money. And this correlation held to up until $75,000. But after an annual income of $75,000, people weren't any happier. What I suggest is that any extra time that you're spending on getting more than $75,000 a year, it's time that you could spend on your friends, your relationships, or your family. How do you want to spend that extra time? Let me tell you how I answered that question the hard way. Ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to do things right. I wanted to be the best at what I did. And schoolwork wasn't the exception. I went into this high demanding high school program that demanded a lot of time and sacrifices of me. I worked hard, I missed family events, I missed trips, I missed social events, and I missed on a lot of friends. But I thought, it's worth it. I'm working for the most important thing in my life. It's my career. It's worth it. Have you ever heard the song, Cats in a Cradle? If you haven't heard the song, it's about a son that tells his father that he wants to spend time with him. But the father is always too busy, and he says, you'll know we'll have a good time then. Right? But that time never comes. The future comes, and they never spend that good time. My case was the reverse. Back in high school, I was working really hard. I remember being in my room, doing all my homework. And I remember my dad coming in my room and saying, hey, Raul, do you want to spend some time? Do you want to hang out? Do you want to watch a program, watch TV? And I remember feeling angry, desperate, impatient, because I felt that he didn't understand me. I was working so hard to be the best that I could, the best son, the best student. Working so hard for these things that were the most important things in my life. And he didn't see that. So I said no. After I finished high school, I got into this Ivy League school. I went to Cornell. And I was doing, taking some interesting classes. I was doing sports. But as the year went by, I slowly realized I was unhappy. I was puzzled. I didn't know why. I was living the dream. I was in an Ivy League school. I had gotten everything that I wanted. But I wasn't happy. Life was supposed to be perfect. But it was not. When my year ended, I went back to Monterey, Mexico, and I was thinking, 
Who do I want to become? What do I want to remember of myself at the end of my life? And I realized I did not have the answers to those questions. So I thought, maybe I need some time off. Just that idea scared me. I didn't know where it was going to take me. I was so focused on a certain path that I was scared to even try anything else. But I knew I needed the time. So I took time off and did not go back to school. Over those years that I took off, I started talking to people that I trusted. I started writing in my journal a lot. And I did some research. I found that there's a nurse called Bronnie Ware who works in Australia with terminally ill patients in the last weeks of their lives. And she found across hundreds of patients that they had one thing in common. They all said, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. I wish that I had spent more time with my family and friends. I then bumped into a book called Happy For No Reason. And in the book, there was a study that said that people that valued wealth, power, and status over close relationships were twice as likely to report being fairly or very unhappy. And in a study by the University of Chicago, they found that people with five or more close relationships were 50% more likely to report being very happy. Now I knew that relationships were the most important parts of my life. And I knew I had made some bad decisions in the past, especially saying no to my dad. I decided to change. I set up a weekly lunch with my dad just by ourselves to talk and get to know ourselves better. I reconnected with old friends. I formed a soccer team with them. I met new people, made great new buddies. I even met my wife. My life was a lot happier. And I was back on track. A few months ago, here at Stanford, I attended a talk about relationships. In this talk, we had GSP students and medical students, another student from the university. But after two hours of discussion, I found out that most of us put relationships way below. We put our studies, our work, everything else about <coughs> relationships. And we just thought that relationships will work out by themselves. But let me tell you that that's not true. What I found out from those years back then is that if you want great and fruitful relationships in your life, you need to work hard for them. And I realized that I need to remind myself of that every day. I want to share with you an analogy made by a former CEO of Coca-Cola called Brian Dyson. He said, Imagine life is like a game where you're juggling a set of balls. You name them. Work, family, spirit, friends. You will soon find out that work is like a rubber ball. If you drop it, it'll bounce back. But family and friends, if you drop them, they will break. Looking back at my life, I realized I haven't juggled that well at times. I've been close to dropping the most important parts of my life. But now I know that relationships are first. For me, they represent the true currency of happiness. Today, I invite you to reflect on how you want to juggle the aspects of your life and which of those aspects you don't want to juggle.